We'll have a few short videos here uh, talking about the implementation of this new language we've made up, T0. So we've we'll already talked about uh, the syntax for the language and our internal representation of the various types of expressions. Um, and we had some examples. We showed examples of the strings and what they would parse to, the parse trees for them, how we're representing those trees, so how we represent the expression internally in our program, whether it's in Java or in Racket. Uh, we'll show the Java implementation momentarily. Um, but first I want to talk about the, the three methods we're going to be working with. Oh, I keep forgetting it's mirror imaged. Three methods we're going to be working with. Um, uh, expert a string, parse, and eval. Okay. And I'm going to talk about expert a string and eval first because they both deal with the data type, uh, follow the design recipe to a T. So there's really no interesting new code methods here. Let's go look at that. So here's our T0 implementation in Racket that's provided. Um, you know, it's linked on the lectures page. Uh, we have the, the grammar here to remind us, and then the data definitions down here. Uh, we again need to keep this in mind, especially these three structures. Uh, bin op, a paren, and a parity expression. Uh, and then numbers are just going to be naked numbers in our language. Okay, we've already seen examples of expressions. We're going to skip over parse for the moment and look at, uh, first let's look at two string. Okay, expert a string is what I call it. Takes in any expert returns a string. Hey, we had a union type with four types of experts. We'll have a cond with four branches. I put a little else in so I can have a customized error. Um, that's fine. Uh, if you have a number, just print out the number. We call number to string. Um, okay, if it's a, uh, a double versus an int, we have a little bit of um, work there to do, but it's basically, hey, just call return number to string on the number we have. If I have a parenthesized expression, great, go ahead and that was a struct with one field inside, pull out the field was part of the recipe. Hey, think about its type, make the natural recursive call. It's another expert. Hey, get the string version of how, however complicated that internal expression is inside the parentheses, figure out its whole thing and start with that. This is what we begin with. Oh, hey, just take that to make it printed as a parenthesized expression, just slap parentheses around it. So, okay. Uh, bin ops, again, pull out the fields, the left, the operator, and the right. And left and right are both themselves experts, could be arbitrarily complicated experts with a big, huge tree. Well, call expert a string on that and we have a whole string representing that left-hand side of the operator. Just string append. Um, the, the beginning of the operator token, uh, remember the space. Our bin op itself, we are representing as strings. And uh, I think when we set it up, we sort of said we could use strings or symbols or both very natural internal representations. And I suggested a string might work out better for us in the future. And that's because I've written this function already. So. Um, that little bit was advanced wisdom. Probably symbols a slightly more appropriate type, but yeah. And then parsing using a string will be a little bit easier here as well. Okay, uh, if you have an ex a parity expression, great. Go ahead and pull out the fields, make a recursive call, figure out how to put the pieces together. Oh, just string append all those subparts with the different keywords we have that delimit the subparts. Okay, nothing could be simpler. Um, follows the design recipe exactly as so it's a poster child for how to follow the design recipe with all the steps. Similarly for eval, I want to go ahead and evaluate an expression. So what is, and we have some examples of our input to make test cases with. Uh, I'm going to look at the test cases in a moment. That's a future video coming up. But yeah, we had examples of the data, so 34, how do we evaluate 34? It is the answer already. A number is a very simple type of expression that is already evaluated, okay? Um, 
If I have something like make paren of 34, what should that evaluate to? What number should that evaluate to? Every expression evaluates to a value, a number. Um, well, clearly make paren of 34 should evaluate to 34. It should, uh, parenthesized expression should evaluate to whatever the things inside the parentheses evaluated to. That's pretty clear. Um, make bin up of three boy four. Uh, yeah, no problem. That was plus, and so that will be seven. And then uh, we can have more complicated things. Gosh, how is that going to work? Well, figure out what this expert evaluates to, 34. Figure out what this expert evaluates to, 7. That's from the template. Um, and now we start with 7, boy, and 34, and say, hey, how do we put these together to get our answer of 41? OK, let's go look at the code for that and do, do, do down to the code for eval. Yeah, uh, numbers evaluate to themselves. A parenthesized expression, pull out the expression that's inside there. You get a whole tree, eval that. Apply that recursive call. Again, that's from the template. Um, from the template, pull out the fields, the ones that themselves are entire expressions. Evaluate the left-hand side, evaluate the right-hand side of my bin up. I now have a string and two numbers. How should I uh, go ahead and evaluate that? Well, it depends on the string. There's different cases of what that string is, which operator it is, and really technically that string is another union type. So maybe rather than go ahead and process that union type right here, I could. Um, but maybe I should call a helper function that processes that union type of the operator. Do we have the plus op, the thing that turns into the plus operator, the minus operator, the multiplication operator. So I have a little helper function here, eval bin up, um, and it's a cond uh, on the string. The str an op, the operator, is one of three different strings. So go ahead and check for that, and either add, subtract, or multiply our two numbers that we pass to this helper. OK. So. Like, yes, the longest code there. Again, looking what comes from the design recipe. Uh, all these different subparts came from it. We gave them names. Don't really have to. You could do this without giving them names. And then realizing, hey, that string, the operator, is uh, itself a union type. So call a helper function that union type. So this exactly follows the. Um, the design recipe, the template for the union type of operators. Boy, boy, or boy. So. Uh, finally, um, by the way, if you're look, this is from 2018. If you're watching this in a future year, I apologize for the choice of operator names. My hands were tied. I the class voted. I only had to override by a couple of votes to have this outcome. So, okay, um, parity expressions again. Pull out your fields. If they're ex themselves experts, think about the recursive call. Yeah, I probably want to know what each of those expressions evaluates to. Remember, there's a difference between the tree and the thing it evaluates to. And that's what eval is all about. Expert to know. Um, so yeah, now I have three numbers. And I'm like, hey, now that I have three numbers, figure out what the answer should be. Well, ask if that first number is even or not. That was the meaning, the semantics of that parity expression that we talked about. OK. So I'll pause here. Uh, we'll pick up parse in the next uh, little video. But gosh, uh, you can't get much more immediate direct code than this. And we're doing eval on an entire parse tree. Um, helps, maybe help, helps you understand why Barlow has been uh, pushing this uh, design recipe so hard. If we hadn't done all this, if I just sort of said at the beginning of the semester, hey, write a program that processes the parse tree, we would not have a whole lot of success, I'd imagine. Okay, see you in the next video.